Welcome to Authors Revealed. I'm Becky Anderson. I'm so excited. One of the authors I've been waiting for for so long has finally come to see us. His name is Rob Bouye, and it's the third book in the Mr. Terrup series. It's Saving Mr. Terrup. Rob, welcome to Anderson's in Naperville. Thank you. I'm thrilled to be here. Well, so. I want to tell you, we have been begging for you to come to see us. So many of our kids, and this book, the first book, because of Mr. Trump, I have book talked it to here and there. And, and we have so many kids who have read this book. And well, you know, it's across the country at this point. But we wanted you to come so badly. So I am so happy you are finally, finally here. Oh, thank so, you. Yeah. So I want to thank you for doing, we did a couple of school events with us today. With the, and now this is the third book. It's the trilogy, the, the Terup trilogy, or the T trilogy, whatever yeah. you want to call it. So, so how were those schools today? Because being a former elementary teacher, what, what is it like when you go into schools now as an author? It's great. I mean, yeah. even the kids, uh, it just fills you with energy and yeah. um, excitement. Yeah. I, I, as soon as I get in front of them, I'm just ready to go. Uh, yeah. You know, you could be dropped dead exhausted and somehow, I don't know, you just get with them yeah. and it, it gets you going. So it was high energy, they always yeah. are, the visits, yeah. and a lot of fun, a lot of storytelling, and oh, a lot I of bet. laughing, and, I bet. I bet. Um, and then serious moments too. So. Sure, sure, sure. Well, but it was great. Yeah. So, so was it hard writing the third book and knowing that this is the end? Was it, was it hard to say goodbye to these seven students? And, and to, to Mr. T himself, was it hard to say goodbye? Well, is it the end? Well, that's, what, the well, that's what I'm wondering. That's why I asked you before we started about maybe you'll write something about when they hit high school or something. You well, know? Yeah. Um, at this point, it's been out for a few months, and I'm happy to say I'm getting a lot of emails that say, please say you're writing a fourth, oh, and then other emails okay. that say, okay. can't wait for the fourth. <laughs> so um, I'm not actively writing a fourth okay. Mr. Terry right. right now. Okay. I have ideas, and I guess time will tell. Time will but, tell. Okay. You know what? What's funny about your question is when I finished the second book, I did think that was that was that it. Was it. Yeah. And um, yes, when I still remember getting off the phone with my editor, and she said, "Okay, Rob, that's it. You won't see it again until it's a book." And it hit me so hard. I was really sad. I had Were spent okay. every day for uh, honestly probably about nine years at that point because it took a while wow. to make the first book happen. Yeah. So I, yeah. I was with these characters for a long time, and then to hear her say, "That's it," I was. Yeah really hard um, so, so six years to, to get the first one yeah, published was, right yeah, yeah long now that's the you know well, I, I'm not working on it every single day exactly back exactly then, but it sure, certainly sure. was yeah uh, when, when it started to kind of pick up momentum I was working on right. it all the time okay so so can you say right here it's not the end so um, everybody knows so they feel better <laughs> we want to know you want to know that it's not the end I, I don't think it needs to okay. be the end. Okay, so. good. I, I've got different ideas about good. that. We'll see because what happens. When, when, because they kept saying this, this is the end, this is the end of the trilogy, and it was like so sad to think that we can't, because you have created, you have created the teacher that we all love, the teacher that we, that one teacher we all remember that had made a huge difference, that we all can talk about, that one teacher. But these seven kids, these friends, oh my gosh, they are so brilliant, and they are so individual. There are many people who try and write from, from multiple perspectives and they don't get it right. You, you got it right with these seven. Yeah, I don't. You did. You did. So I, I guess my question is talking about seven, you know, fifth grade kids. Mm -hmm. how, do, how do you channel these personalities from Peter to Jessica to, you know, whoever it is you're talking about. Channeling them, granted, you are, you've been an elementary school teacher, but just getting inside their heads because that was a beautiful thing about reading because of Mr. Turup for the first time is that I felt like I really knew each one of them. So how did I do it? How did right? you do this? Yeah. <laughs> I got right. lucky. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 no. Um, I just want to know how you channeled these kids. And how, are they kids that you knew, that you taught? Are so, they part you? You know, I'm, I'm often asked about the characters. Yeah. Um, the answer, you, you said two things right there. Are they part, some of the kids I taught, are they part of me? And right. yes and yes. They are bits yeah. and pieces of so many different students, okay. um, all sorts. I mean, yeah. I had so many kids that were Peters and Lexi's right. and Jessica's and, and Luke's and the rest of them. Right. I, there were lots. And um, But then, yes, there are bits and pieces of me with with all, the, all of those characters as well. Yeah. I, my grandmother lived right next door to me growing oh. up. Yeah. And she was one of the 
most important people I've had in my life and just an amazing relationship that will always be with me and so that of course helped me with Danielle uh, oh, that, okay. You know, she's the girl with the grandmother, dynamite grandmother right yeah, next door. Yeah. Now, her grandmother's not my grandmother, but certainly that whole relationship and all that that you know plays out is is very real. So, right. and then there's imagination. So, yeah, sure. All that I guess glued together helped me with these with these kids, and I I didn't have everything about them figured out from the get go. I knew I had this quiet, shy girl who didn't want to be noticed but I wasn't really sure why it was enough that was real and exciting to me and I was able to get going with yeah. the story and then kind of figure out why as sure. the pages continued yeah. um, but it takes time and it's a lot of revising and doing sure, over sure, um, yeah. but I guess you know by the time the third book rolled around they're just they're part of that you. it's easy no, but I no. certainly know you know them right yeah and what yeah what's important for them. You know, you think about the kids, how do you talk about them, describe sure. them, but also what is it that's important to them? Yeah. What, is, what's, what is it that they're going to want to talk about and be right. dealing with? And, yeah. and this book is different because, you know, all, all kids sort of worry about when they end up in middle school. You know, when, you, when you're switching from elementary to middle school, mm -hmm. you know, worrying about this, this, the stressors and what's going to happen. You know, that you had, how am I going to traverse this new world? Because now I'm the youngest. I'm not the sure. oldest in the school. I'm the youngest in the school. And I think you caught it so well in this. And a group of friends, how things change. Your group of friends change mm. as you move from elementary yeah, to whole, middle school to a high school. And then, you know, moving even on further to college and mm -hmm. university, how things change. But this, this seven... You know, and I don't want to give too much away. No, no spoilers here. We don't want to ruin it for anybody to read read the, these three books. But what happens to them? Something happens in a game that they play, and then things sort of break them up. Yeah. And and they always wish they could go back to Mr. Tarot. Mm -hmm. So, so did you? Do you have students? Do you have students come back and talk to you when you were from middle school? Sure. Yeah. yeah? They would. Uh, yeah. You know, they would. They were. I was teaching fourth grade and third grade, and then yeah. the kids would move on and um, even if they were in fifth or sixth grade still in the same building they would pop into the classroom and then when they were uh, gone from the building there were times when uh, Dakota she was definitely one of my Jessica's ah, okay. and came back I remember I think she was in seventh grade and came back and what did we talk about books <laughs> right right what are you reading well no that's what Jessica I was. remember so well, these, vivid yeah um, that's cool yeah because, so they would come back yeah, and now I yeah. I hear from them occasionally yeah, you know it's yeah. it's kind of funny yeah where, um, they send emails or Facebook posts or whatever. And Jessica, that was what the great thing about the books that Mr. Trupp shares with her. So we, now we know where that came from, Dakota. <laughs> yes. All right, that's so cool. So knowing the book's been out since July, what what did you hear from your your rabid fans? And there are so many because you've won so many state awards around around the country. It was on the Rebecca Cottle list, one of the absolute favorites here in the state of Illinois, and and also won an E.B. White you know read aloud award award with the American Booksellers Association. So so what you know what do you hear from fans now that they've had the third book? What are you hearing? That the books now in the world. Well, like I said, a lot of please say you're writing a fourth one. <laughs> and can't wait for right. the fourth right. one. There's a, a lot of that. Um, it's getting a great response. People yeah. really love it. Um, sure. It's funny, you know. I I'm just in the last two weeks meeting different kids, signing mm -hmm. books, different readers. You know, the, this person says book one still her favorite. This one loves book two. This one book three was far and away the best one. So yeah. it's interesting how it. I don't know. They, they love them all. I could say that. Right, Every right. reader will say that. And you um, know what? I read something, um, somebody who had not read the first two books, but read this one. It wasn't, they weren't sure. They thought they had missed out, but they got into the book and they, they were so engaged in these characters and, and hearing from their point of view that I thought that was, so each book really does can stand on its own. Yeah. And you and, know what? I, I got lucky with that no, too. No, because I, so many okay, trilogies we know, and we're sitting in the young adult aisle. There's so many of these fantasy or dystopians, or and that middle book is always that bridge book, and people go, "Oh, that wasn't as good as the first or the last book." But these books, knowing that you had written the second one, I thought it was the end. Yeah, they really do stand on their own. They're, that's really remarkable in that fact. And there's yeah. enough there, I guess, where you, oh, for if sure. anything, you just want to go and read the other yeah. ones. Yeah. So. So tell me, for the first book, where, where did the seed start to grow for this story? And, and the idea of it, 
And I, and I want you to tell us a little bit about some of the word games you used to play in your own classroom mm. that Mr. T does in these books, but, but how even the name of Terrupt, how it came about. All right. That first book is dedicated to my former students. It's because of them that I started writing. Mm. That's, that's really where it happened. I was not uh, a reader or writer prior to teaching. Mm. And... You know, I guess I should say when I started studying, working on my master's to become a classroom teacher, that's mm -hmm. when I really fell in love with books. And ah. I was just reading like crazy. And then okay. I was super excited to share those books with, with kids. And it really started there. But I guess as a teacher, my thinking was if I'm going to uh, hope to grow these lifelong passionate readers and writers, mm -hmm. I need to be that first. Ah. How do you... How do you I convey that. How do you make that happen in your classroom yeah. if you're not a reader or if you're not a writer? So yeah. I, yeah. I was reading all the time, and then I started writing so that I could share in the experience of my students, really share stories, share examples with them. And so it's because of the kids I was thinking about stories all the time. And then there was a day when I got hit by an idea that took me by complete surprise, and it wasn't an idea that I was just going to share in the classroom. It was the one that started me on the journey of trying to write a book, yeah. and it wasn't Mr. Terrupt. But um, because of that first seed idea, I got really serious about writing, and I joined the Society of Children's Book Writers and Illustrators. I found a critique group, and I was working on a story, yeah. and um, things were going well with that story. I, things were going well, yeah. and okay. uh, but in the midst of that, there was a day when these seven characters came to me, just by wow. complete surprise. It wow. was, you know, it was the end of the school year. I was, I think, I was mm -hmm. reflecting on the school year, my students, projects we had done, and. And uh, it's just a matter of, you're, you know, I talk about, when I, when I talk with students, I always talk about this idea of what I call the writing switch. Mm -hmm. If you're to think of a light switch on the wall, you can flip it on and off. And I think that, you know, these young students in the classroom, they turn their writing switch on at writing time and turn it off when writing's over. But yeah. as a writer, as an author, that switch is never off. It's always on. And yeah. you're just busy thinking about the world like a writer and right. wondering about things. Your characters and ideas are with you. And... Bam, you get hit by an idea when you least expect it. For sure, some of my, yeah. my best ideas and sentences have happened in my head when I've been far away from that writing oh, sure. desk. Yeah. And uh, that's, you know, these kids showed up. Right. And I had, I had all seven from the beginning. Wow. Never more, never less. I had the kid who was goofing off, the kid who loved school, the kid who hated school, the new girl, the mean girl, the shy girl. They were, they were all there. Yeah, yeah. And I you started know. to write about them and right. kept thinking about them. And honestly, I tried to resist the idea initially because I was working on that other project but uh, it wouldn't leave me alone that right. idea and the characters wouldn't leave me alone and so then I just I figured to, okay yeah. I need to get started see yeah. what will happen right here so, we are yeah <laughs> well no 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 I'm so glad <laughs> here we are but you know talking about you know thinking about being a writer and that switch is always on you know writing things down because you know how you channel the voice of these kids mm -hmm hearing kids talk and, and the way they talk mm -hmm. and the phrases they use and the colloquialisms or whatever they're using, um, the slang, whatever. Do you keep a notebook, you know, and that's that your writer that's always on. So, it, it, or any idea that comes to you. Do you, do you write I do down? have a writer's notebook. It's okay. with me. It goes with yeah. me everywhere. Okay. Um, and occasionally <laughs> when I'm at these schools, I'll hear sure. different, uh, different things the kids will say and yes I'll write, write it. it down I'll write it down yeah for yeah. sure okay. so you asked me about the word games that's the yeah the word games and dollar, and and dollar Mr. Terrapt, where, where his name comes from so tell us a little bit about the word games and if so you play them so he begins in that first novel with um the dollar word challenge and that was a challenge that right. I did I don't know if I need to explain that but <laughs> read the book I guess <laughs> um, uh that was something I did every yeah. year and uh there was a boy student who's my third year teaching ryan went home and shared the dollar word challenge with his father who happened to be a computer programming guy and his dad yeah. sat down and did his thing and ryan came into school the next day with this uh, piece of paper double-sided with all the dollar words from the dictionary listed in alphabetical order hey mr Boulay, here's your dollar <laughs> words I said, oh ryan that's not what you're supposed to do for the project give me that paper <laughs> and so i took his paper and i hung on to it i never gave it back to him i still have it and, oh that's cool and i would use it to be able to give my kids hints and yeah. then I ended up with this kid Luke this character Luke who was going to love dollar yeah. words and um, yeah. Yeah. I would write his part whenever it felt like it was time for dollar word I would uh, you know I'd scan that cheat yeah. sheet and find the perfect word right. and of course right. 
I knew that this teacher was pretty amazing, like dollar words, and that helped me to figure out what, what the guy's name would, would have to be. So yeah, that's yeah. where that came no, from. No, 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 but the games and everything, because Ms. Mr. Turf is, he's kind of a tough teacher, you know? I mean, he doesn't, he doesn't let kids off lightly. He keeps them engaged. He keeps them do going. Were you that kind of teacher, too, when you taught? The question, it's either one of two questions. I'm often okay. asked, did I have Mr. Terrapt when I was a student? Okay, well, Is that why true. I wrote the book? Because I had this teacher. Yeah, right. I did not. I had teachers I still remember, and I really enjoyed, but not Mr. Terrapt. Uh -huh. So then, was I Mr. Terrapt in the classroom? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I would never be bold enough to say that, because right. everybody agrees he's really <laughs> pretty special. Uh, but he definitely was the guy I tried to be. And so some days maybe came close, and other days I, I'm sure I came up short. But yeah. there yeah. are certainly a lot of connections between right. that guy and, and myself. He's a, a lot of you know bits and pieces of me and imagination. Sure. So sure. those projects sure. are pretty familiar yeah. to yeah. me, and yeah. I'm just able to change things and make them better in the yeah. book. Yeah. Your experience as a teacher, as you said, you know, becoming a reader, so you can make your kids into readers and, and becoming that way. But but the experience of teaching for that, you know, how many years you taught, how how did that actually inform you as, as a writer? I mean, what did you pick up from that? The discipline or any kind of the aspect? Because I know you, you talk about writing and then reading and then revising and going all over again and, and repeating and repeating and repeating. But what, what other lessons did those, those years as a teacher bring to your writing skills? So, John Irving has blurbed my books, and um, John and I first met in a wrestling room. Uh, he came to practice at the school where I was coaching, Northfield Mount Hermon, uh, independent boarding school. And um, he and I really could talk at great lengths about this writing and wrestling connection. So I know you've asked about teaching, but you right. you hinted to lessons and revision and well, and doing it yeah. over and over. And really all of that for me came from wrestling. So that yeah. was my first real passion. Okay. And I had a lot of uh, lofty goals in that sport. Sure. It was something sure. I started when I was four and chased down wow. a lot of dreams and um, accomplished a lot, but also mm -hmm. came up short and was mm -hmm. left pretty disappointed at you know, different times throughout my career. Uh -huh. I, I wrestled all throughout college, and then I was I was coaching. So it's right. been a huge part of my my life. Sure. But that's really where I learned some pretty important things that are really helping me as an author, from okay. goal setting sure. to commitment, okay. perseverance, repetition, doing it over and over right. and over. Learning the basics that get you to the rest of what's so, happening, right? So um, yeah. wrestling really, yeah. I think, prepared me for this. Yeah. When I was done competing, I actually was... You know, I, I worked really hard. I trained a lot to to achieve it at, you know, a Division One level. And um, mm. when that was over, it was kind of like, sure. okay, there's an empty spot. And writing filled that. Yeah. There's a lot of the same thing. Instead of getting up uh, at the crack of dawn to go for a three, four-mile run, mm -hmm. it's getting up and I'm and working on my writing. It's writing. the same mental endurance, commitment, alone time. Right, There's a right. lot of connection there, but uh, so that really I think that was has informed your writing a lot. Yeah, and I'm sure John it, talking to John Irving, being he was a wrestler too. Yeah, right? so that's why I mentioned John. Yeah, he, right. Uh, no, because that I th that was one of my questions about your your connection with him and him blurbing the book. You yeah. know, it was 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 really really wonderful. But I'm sure that connection is is yeah. You know, the, yeah. Like I said, the wrestling and writing piece for yeah, sure. But I'm incredibly sure. right. uh, lucky and. Fortunate yeah. to have him in my corner, right, so right, and that our right. our paths cross. But yeah. um, you know, as far as the voices, you asked about the voices and being in the classroom. Yeah. And as a teacher, I really valued reading aloud, and I loved it when my kids wanted me to stop so mm -hmm. that we could talk about what was taking place in the story, share connections, questions, predictions, right. have conversations. I valued that very much as a teacher. Mm -hmm. I value it very much as a parent. And my books right. are full of things that you could stop and have conversations about. I really had that mindset in writing these stories. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, writing the first book, I absolutely pictured a teacher reading it aloud. And isn't it just kind of ironic that it's a read aloud? Well, it's a read aloud. Well, it won a read aloud award, award, award yeah. which is so, so cool. But, but it I is really, a great read aloud. Yeah, I, it, it I makes really, great reader's theater. And, too. I, and I think that that's yeah. why, um, you know, some of the voices, I guess, maybe ultimately worked. And there's, uh, there's uh, some issues in there and struggles yeah, for characters for sure. and conflict and things that you can talk about. Right, and, so. it, and that's what makes them so real. I and and so. I think in this book, too, there's there's more issues in there. You know, you have one and character who has for sure. a mom who has 
breast cancer. You have another who has been diagnosed with diabetes. But yeah. then you also, Don't give too much away. I know. That's it. That's it for the spoilers. No more. No there more. are I some big surprises There in are there. surprises, but I'm not gonna, we're not going to point to any characters of this stuff that's happening. <laughs> but even for Mr. Terrapt, you know, mm -hmm. what's happening with him and what happens sure. sometimes. And that's giving it away, too. But, <laughs> but the saving part, you know, yeah. he has some problems. And, of course, his students want to help him, you yeah. know. They miss him. And it's a great want, title. It, it, it is. It is. It is so a great title. So, um, outlining. So, okay, talking about being a teacher and telling your students to outline. Do you outline when you write? Or is it surprising you? When no, you write? no, no, no. I definitely, um, today visiting students, I shared my plan with them. Okay. Graphic organizer, if you want to okay, call it that. Okay, sure, sure. And um, so I... I have a way to try to organize. It's funny, it sort of changes with each project mm -hmm. um, a little bit here and there, right. but I end up with notes everywhere. Uh, you know, you're writing and the ideas keep growing and I've got to jot them down and then I try to organize the notes just so I can keep track of that with, yeah, my, right. with my manuscript. Um, I wouldn't say I, I don't have it all outlined sure. or planned out when I start. I have some of the character I, I'm good with and the story and I kind of get going and as I work I it kind of evolves simultaneously. I learn a little bit more about the character. I come up with new story ideas. I I don't necessarily write beginning to middle to end. Right. Um, you know I might get hung up in the middle and jump and write the end and that helps me figure out what to yeah, do. And sure. with these seven voices there certainly are times when I write this scene in Jessica's voice only to figure out I need Jeffrey to tell it or oh, Luke okay. and yeah, I have right. to redo sure. it and sure. completely tell it in a different yeah. different voice. Right. So, so when you're dealing with so many characters, do you keep sort of like a little um, a bio that you kind of look at or do you know them so well at this point that yeah, you don't this, need that? At this point, yeah. I, I do spend time writing about the characters. Um, you know, I'll... Mm -hmm. I do have to do that from time to time, um, but with these seven, maybe not as much as, you know, so since since finishing book three, I've tackled a new story, new characters, a cast of characters, um, okay. but brand new, different okay. story, and it's taken a while. I'm still not sure I've quite got it yeah. uh, figured out, but there's a lot of spending time with the characters and kind of writing yeah, you know, and, yeah. Uh, live in their heads for a while right yeah, yeah, yeah. right right so so who is your favorite character of the seven is it peter or jessica or i don't have one. Oh, I, really I know you i know kids ask you that all the time they sure do they and do. kids have favorites and that's great but i don't yeah. i love okay. i love all of them if okay. i if there was one that i could say i don't like as much as the others that voice wouldn't have ended up in the book the, the writing the story with that character wouldn't it I mean, honestly, I could I could go through and name scenes and sentences sure. for each of those kids that wow. I just absolutely. In the new book, Saving Mr. Terrap, there is a a scene with Jeffrey and Anna uh, takes place outside of a wrestling venue or or in conjunction with. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. Absolutely <laughs> love it. God, I love it. And there's yeah. there are so many with Peter and Luke. There's I just yeah. go okay. Jessica and Lexi. I mean, come on. I love okay. Them. Okay. I love them all. Okay. We won't ask any more favorites. Okay. <laughs> So, what, what do you hope kids, I mean, with these three books, and we hope there'll be more, mm. what do you hope kids will take away from, from, from Mr. Terrapton and, and, his, and those seven characters after, after reading them? And, and kids can't not get enough of these, so you better write another one. But, but what do you hope kids will take away from, from this series? Oh, I think there's, a, there's not one answer to that. Things yeah. that really make me feel good, um, I just Skyped with with a class in Georgia mm -hmm. on Friday. I think it was Friday I was Skyping with them. Okay. A little girl, fifth grader, asked me, Mr. B.A., do you think everybody deserves a second chance in life? And that mm -hmm. question floored me. Um, uh, it hasn't left me alone, and it won't. I, it was, I think it's a pretty powerful question, and if that's wow. the question the girl's oh, left with wow. after reading the book, I'm okay with that. Yeah. So different time um, I had a boy again in Georgia this was a few years ago um, and his question for me again a fifth grader in Georgia smart kids in Georgia um, <laughs> he said Mr. Bouillet do you think all people are good people that was his question mm. that has never left me alone um, just wow. so wow. How to, hard to answer for well, they, no, fifth those graders are, those sometimes are really, really hard powerful to questions, questions. And, but so. when kids say to me you know um, 
I've learned a bit about how not to judge people so quickly, mm -hmm. especially when you don't know everything that's going on with them. There's more to the person than just what I see every day in the classroom. Right. That's a pretty good takeaway. Yeah. The wow. collaborative classroom in the first book, very special piece to that first book. And when kids ask about that, I always feel pretty special. Um, of all the things I did when teaching, I did do that project. Uh, that was probably the most rewarding. My students were very much like Mr. Terrips at the beginning of that project. And, and for people that don't know, the collaborative right. classroom was the classroom where there were students with special needs. And so my right. students were going to interact with with those children and were very scared and nervous and didn't say the yeah. nicest things in the beginning, yeah. much like Mr. Right. T's kids. Sure. And by the end, uh, they were very different. Things yeah. had changed and that was just so rewarding. So right. that yeah. takeaway around people with special yeah. needs and yeah. those children to see that they have so much to offer is sure. um, another good one. And, and the first book, of course, I was... I, there's so many things that oh, were... Oh, I know, I know. Um, but, it's, but, but that first book, the, all of part two, I really was thinking about the idea of whose fault is it. Right. Uh, is there such a thing as an accident? Who are you going to blame? A question that I still can't answer. And, and so sure. I hope readers are left struggling with that yeah, question, Yeah, it's, it's good to think about it in and, and, yeah. and the different scenarios, but to think that there's not always a right answer or a wrong yeah. answer to something. And, in the, and, you know, when Mr. Terrick falls again, there's a lot with... I think the idea of how important it is to have friends, friends that are going to help you through right. situations, stick with you, because um, there are difficult choices to make, and good kids yeah. make mistakes too, and you can learn from them yeah. and grow from yeah. them and you know stick together. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so, so you know, you know, you know, you're hitting the mark when you get questions like that because they show a lot of thought that they got something out that made them. To made them look at a situation from all sides. Yeah. It's being open-minded and, and looking at a situation in a different way. So those are a yeah. few of the yeah. things I hope they're left with. Oh, yeah. I yeah. think those are pretty powerful. That's a lot. Very That's powerful. very powerful. Yeah. So what are you working on now? So we, we want to know because, okay, we'll wait, so we'll I, wait I'm, for... <laughs> I mean, this is... So, you know, here I am three books in, and I still yeah. um, just recently finished a manuscript that I've spent, um, oh, goodness, I don't know, seven, eight months on probably. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm anxious to hear from my editor to find yeah. out, you know, what's your, what's your feeling on this? Sure. Is this something that maybe has potential or am I need to start over again? <laughs> uh, who knows? But I, I have, um, with the newest project, I've been working on a cast of characters. And that's something that my readers have really enjoyed, a cast of characters taking turns telling the story, yeah. something that... Uh, my publisher really likes mm -hmm. and that I and, and we like to for yeah <laughs> so uh, yeah. I've got a, a new cast of characters um, I have four at this point two boys two girls and it's another school story with a you know there's important things going on in school but also a very important after school program then and these four end up in the after school program together for different reasons for different reasons mm -hmm. not necessarily all excited about it right but there they are and uh, ultimately, they find themselves in a pretty tricky situation. And it's tricky because they don't know right from wrong. They don't know what to do. Mm, okay. And there's this big internal conflict for uh, them. And I'm so incredibly excited about it. Okay. This is a conflict I've had in mind, something I've wanted to write about since before Mr. Terrapt. And it's something that I feel like all kids can relate to and connect okay. with. And it is difficult to answer oh, right versus wrong wow. and of course the characters will Have make to, decisions right, and consequences right. will follow and things will change for them in uh, big but, and important yeah, ways that's right so great book for I mean great I can just imagine some of the conversations and discussions <laughs> and 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 I think I think that sounds absolutely fantastic well I hope so <laughs> I'm, I'm working away so okay we'll see. all right Rob, Thanks. thank you so much. Thank and you. thank you so much for finally coming to see us oh, yes. because we absolutely adore these three books. Thanks. Mr. Terrell. Thank, thank, you, thank you. you, thank you, thank you. What a great conversation with Rob Bouye and the third book in the Mr. Terrell School Series. It's called Saving Mr. Terrell. Thanks for joining me on Authors Revealed. <laughs>